<laughs> As I head towards 90 episodes, I'm bringing you two guests who are a couple and a couple of fantastic, talented people. Bringing into his next. You are tuned in to Black Hollywood Lives. Breaking into. Hey. Oh. Hey. Yay. Yes, I love this song so much. There we go. Hey. There you go. Hey, life. Woo. That's right, girl. I'm taking my freedom. I just think this song just represents so much of what I, I'm doing my life like it's golden these days. I am these couple is too. Because if you follow them on Twitter, you'll see that. I'm James Lott Jr. And welcome to Breaking Into, Black Hollywood Live show here. And I'm so happy to be here tonight on a Sunday. You guys can join us. I'm bringing some people who live their lives like a golden. And the things that work that words with it. One of them is an actor, writer, producer, singer, and guitar player. Mm-hmm. But in things called like uh, Free State of Mind, 20th Century Woman, White Lightning, he also was uh, one of my February Breaking Into's. Yes, we had something. You want to watch that episode? It was really good. We had a good time. Um, my other guest is an actress, producer, singer. Things like What Would Jesus Do? Going to America Concussion. Started out at Hallmark's Jane Doe series. Mm-hmm, that's right. One's from Nebraska, the other's from Mississippi, and they somehow came together. That's right. LA. One of my favorite couples, Kirk and Joni Boville. Yeah, I, how you doing? Like it's uh, That's right. I love it. <laughs> I love it. The thing, okay, Joni, the thing about you that I noticed before when I first met you first, whatever, you have this smile that just just says hi. Take me in. You're just you're, just, you're so enveloping your smile. It's like I want to be around you. Oh, thank you. James. Like seriously, we don't see that enough. Oh, I want to be around you too. Oh, thank you. That's right. <laughs> All that personality and charisma. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, but seriously, you have you have you have this like really inviting, just kind of presence that we don't see that often out there. Because you know when you're when you're an actor or a singer, a lot of times, it's if it's for the stage, you get off stage, you're a totally different person. You just like you're the same kind of person of some sorts on and off. Yeah. Is that is that a true That's assumption? Pretty true. What you see is what you get. Yeah. And, same way. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm glad to hear you say that though, because yeah. that's. That's what I try to, that's what I want to project. Mm-hmm. And I want to invite people in. And I want to be, well, most people. Yeah, not everybody. Um, <laughs> not, 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 not everybody. <laughs> yeah, and I want people to be comfortable and I want to spread joy. So, yeah. yeah. Joy, joy for Joni. Yeah. You say, actually, on your, one of your things you write down, I talk to people, um, has something interesting to say. It's something you wrote on your Twitter, under your bio. It was like, maybe laugh. It was like something like, um, I'm not going to look on your Twitter. Um, but it's something you wrote that I thought was really funny. Uh, as your bio, and I'm gonna do it up here. But first of all, I want to get to case. Okay, so you're from Mississippi. I'm from Mississippi. You're yep. from from Nebraska. Yep. Mm-hmm. Now Nebraska is that considered Midwest? Yeah. Or is that a plain yes. state? Thing? Well, it's a plain state, but they claim they're Midwest. Cause see, hey, okay, here's the deal. Mississippi, okay. we know we know that's the South. Okay, yes. I I fan from Ohio. We we had this time right. before. Ohio, Pittsburgh. So people are like, well, isn't the Midwest just Ohio, Indiana, um, maybe Kansas? I guess. Iowa, but people are saying, well, but Missouri's too far down, isn't that south? But I hear from them, they consider themselves Midwest. And then Western Pennsylvania says there's Midwest, but they mid-Atlantic. So I'm like, well, so, I'm say, so, it, yeah. so I'm curious yeah. what you, I ask people from Midwest, I'm curious what you think no, the Midwest it's a, is. It's a Midwest, it has some Midwest sentimentality, that's for sure. Yeah. That's what I would think so too. Because yeah. the thing about Pennsylvania especially, it's a long state. Mm-hmm. So, like, Philadelphia truly is East Coast, and that Philly is something totally different than... But I have home in Pittsburgh, and it feels very Midwest. Mm-hmm. They say things yeah. like yins or whatever, things like that there. And it's, and, it's, and it's only two hours from, like, Cleveland. I mean, it's, like it's, it's not that far from the actual, like, mid-Midwest. But I was thinking Nebraska. I've been to Nebraska once, and I was like, is this the Midwest? I mean, yeah, like, it is. It's pretty much outside of... Once you get outside of Lincoln and Omaha, until you get to way out towards the Colorado border, it's pretty much... Flat and cornfields, so it's uh, very. Well, Midwest. isn't if, as it's I heard some? Well, I heard somewhere if there's a cornfield, it's Midwest, right? <laughs> well, that'd be true. I think that's a good. Well, that <laughs> is, <I'm laughs> good. Yeah. Because they say the other places have wheat. That's something different. They say a cornfield, but in the Midwest, I'm like, well, I don't know if that's true, but I mean, that's <laughs> if I've gone in the Midwest, there is cornfields nearby, <laughs> which I would not go corn. into. Would not go into cornfields. <laughs> they have like rats and things. Like that. Stay away. Yeah, I would not. I'm chilling the corn, all that. I would not. I would not. <laughs> right? mm, no, no. <laughs> Uh, okay, this is what you wrote. 
lover of acting, singing, bargain shopping, <laughs> and striking up conversations with people who look interesting. That's why I said I like that. <laughs> Yay! I like that. I'm so sure yeah, that's what it's it. <laughs> I'll tell you one thing too. Tied to that was, um, and I had written about it a couple of weeks ago. I had a, I was running around and we were like at some store, so of course we're separated in different areas. And I can't <laughs> find her, but the way I found Joni, I could hear her laugh. That's how I, I found her. I love it. And then of course I found her. She's talking to somebody, she's a total stranger. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Some in other the chick are talking department. about shoes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, our people, yeah. people are interesting. Like the regular, yeah. just the regular average person. Yes. Are exactly. very interesting. Exactly. And you can never just look at a person and judge, you know, the old judge book by mm-hmm. the cover thing. You mm-hmm. just, you never know who you're standing next to. Especially so in true. this town. So. That's, so, that's so true. Yeah. That's true. I'm a, I'm a talker of people too, but when I go to the Midwest, people talk. Yes. And I forgot about that. I, if I go back, I always forget how not in a hurry they are. So when you go to the grocery store, so you go to like your Giant Eagle or your your Kroger or something like that, and you go there, and and the person who's reading you up reads everything you got. Oh, so you got beans? I love beans. <laughs> yeah. so, so, so my family's like, oh, you got the yams? The yams are like, and they and they talk to you about everything yeah. you buy, and no one in line gets upset. Just like, mm, okay. They have time. I'm at a price chopper, and they're like, oh, so you got this. I'm like, oh, my God. You know, you go to Bob Evans, and you're trying to order some food. Oh, my God, so you know what's really good is my grandmother likes this, and my father. And like, okay, I just want to know if the, the bacon's good. You know, Bob yeah. Evans is my favorite breakfast on earth when we started. Yeah. Um, but just kind of, it's just like, in some parts of the country, that is just a normal thing to talk and converse. Yeah. And it's like. Definitely. You know, this the whole Southern hospitality thing. Yeah, yeah. So we're definitely into that. So you guys have been married since 95? Yep. So I'm not going to ask that, that same question I asked, like, well, how do you think your marriage works? <laughs> I wanna, what I want to ask is, because to me it's a collaboration. Definitely. So I want to ask you, what do you think collaboration is for you guys? How does that work for you guys? This the whole thing of collab of collaborating in this marriage or projects or singing mm-hmm. together. How do you think? Why do you think it works for you guys in terms? You go. Well, you know, I mean, uh, at this at the uh, at the core of it, we're just um, we've always been very very uh, committed to each other, and so um, so we've always been from the position of always having each other's backs, and whether that's like working together. Like you said, it could be music, it could be film, TV, writing, or whatever. Mm-hmm. I would always know, walking out that door, walking in the room to work with Joni, I know till the day I die that she has my back. Yes. Mm. And so, mm-hmm. so for us, it has always been it, it. The baseline is that. So it's it's not a power struggle. It's not um, mm. in any sense. And it's just, it's like a mutual respect. But it's I will always know that. Um, she always will have my best interests all the time. That must be comforting on some yeah. level to you. Yeah. That, okay, I, I got a wife that has my back and who will be with me through thick and thin. Yeah, so... you feel it. Right. So for us, the thing is, is our toughest critics are each other. Okay. So it, when I'm working with Joni and, and if, if, um, if we're filming something and I don't think it's working and I'm taping her, I'm going to be honest. And it doesn't mean she's going to agree with me, but I'm going to be honest because I'm just not going to go, oh, that was awesome. And if I didn't right, like it, yeah. but if she's knocked out of the park, I'm going to tell her she's knocking out of the park. So to me, it will always be, um, it always comes back to that where you choose to support each other. You know, so it's not a power struggle, man. It's like, a, it's Team Bovo. Yeah, time. you guys are very much that. I see that. Yes. <laughs> All day. Another thing, too, when it comes to collaboration, I think that our just our personality styles in general is a good mix because Kirk is the more hardcore driven analytical to the point in your face kind of person <laughs> and I'm the more make a hard punch with a soft glove you know like let's you know let's talk about this let's take it easy let's not stress let's just keep it level headed and ease into it like this so I think we really complement each other like that. Have too. you taken on any of his his stuff in a situation, and vice versa? Have you each have you had as, as something his way of doing it has it worked for you? Like I got I got I do do it his way. Has it worked? Same with have you have you taken some of her advice sometime and has it worked? Well, yeah. I mean, the thing is, like I might be complaining at times talking to her about stuff, but I'm always <laughs> truly I'm always listening to what she okay. says. Okay. Truly, I may be venting sometimes. But at the end of the day, truthfully, the one 
the one who really has my ear is Joni. Okay. Always. So it's kind of go, oh, but deep down, you know, she's what she's saying. <laughs> makes total yeah, sense. sense. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, really, at the end of the day, there's one thing about like venting about something, about what you want to do, but deep down, you know, you're not going to do that. And then she'll come in and, you know, talk you off the ledge. And, okay. And so, okay. and so, um, yeah, I mean, so sometimes it may not appear like that, but it always is. Because, like I said, at the end of the day, the one person I will trust beyond anybody mm-hmm. will be her. How, you know, go ahead. You go ahead. Um, no, that's. I was just like, oh, that's nice. <laughs> <laughs> he said he loves you. No, but, but because I mean, that's because you know, in this town especially, mm. it's about solo, solo, me, me, I, 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 me, me. I need, I need. I. You're both doing the same profession. Yeah. Yes. So we see a lot of marriages fall apart because of that, because yeah. of jealousies or. Or enviable thing. I mean, I guess so. You guys are team both because I see it all the time online yeah. with you guys. Uh-huh. So you both, there's no, you don't have that in your. That's not in your relationship. Nope. No. Because I tell you, what, for us, I, and I tell people this all the time, um, we have a joint account. Okay. <laughs> all the money goes in there, right? Okay, that's so right. Whether it's Joey booking something, me booking yeah. something, it's it all falls into the team Bovel account. And um, and you're right though. There's some couples that that fall apart in this business because of that. Like, I'd be thrilled if Joni all of a sudden booked a series. Oh my God, I'd be great. I'd be thrilled. <laughs> book a series. Do a book a series. I'd drive there every day. I'd pack right. lunch. I wouldn't right. be upset with that. Because you know, cause cause I, I wouldn't. Because if, if I all of a sudden I was getting upset that all of a sudden she's outshining me, mm-hmm. and that ain't love. Yeah. You know, that's, I like that. It's, it's not. So like yes. I look at couples like... Um, you look at like Viola Davis and Julius Tennant. Yes. That's a real powerful couple, and they've been together a long time. Kurt Russell and Goldie Hawn. Yeah, yeah, you know, so there's people that just, they, and yeah. those guys are like yeah. so highly supportive, and then there's some young ones coming up, like Dorian and Simone Missick, you know, oh, yeah, 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 growing yeah. up. Yes. And, yeah. um, so we always try to like, and we have friends like that too, that you know, you want to just support them too, because you know it's tough, and it's yeah. tough, it's tough being married anyway and then in this business there's pressure of being married you know mm-hmm. and uh because for us man if whoever wins it's a win for the team because we've had that win. we've had that same yeah. thing there was here's an example um and it's happened both ways okay we went in one time and uh i think joni joni had an audition for something and we, because we're in the same bit, we carpool everywhere. It's just faster to get it out. So we literally, everybody. Very LA though too, yeah. of course, yeah. it's so, cars. So we, so we carpool in and when Joni may go in for an audition, there'll be people she knows will go, well, where's Kirk? Cause they've, oh, I'm parking the car, if it's vice <laughs> versa, it goes worse. So there's been times where I've been to go in to read for something and literally be in the room and they're going, hey man, is your wife here? And it'd be, they'll leave the session to go talk to Joni oh, out there. Oh, funny. <laughs> and then it's happened though, but it, it's happened that we both have booked jobs at the other person's audition. Oh, how oh, funny. Oh, yeah, it's happened. And then I've had uh-huh. a, I'll never forget, I was on the set, and a producer came up to me and goes, you know, is this cool, you know, because we ended up originally calling in Joni, but ended up booking you for this thing. I said, hey, man, it's the, sa- it's the same, same check book. <laughs> same check book, it's like all good. That. I like and that. And they thought, I go, nah, man, you know, because if, if it had been the other way around, I'm not sweating it. Because, right. uh, that's very that's very interesting. It's a very interesting way to look at it. That it's basically, it's, it's your team. Yep. So everything goes into the house. Yeah. I mean, the house could be anything, your place, whatever. Right, right. Mm-hmm. Goes to your home. That's for that. Your, everything you're doing, whether it's solo or together, is strengthening the team. Yes. Yeah. So, that like that's that. it. Yeah, I mean, um, that's that is the only way we that is the only way we'll roll. It is. It truly is. I mean, that's just kind of that's what we've always done. And yeah. Were you guys friends? How long guys together before you guys got married? Oh, about a year and a half, two years. Yeah. We were in Northern California then. Okay, Northern California. Yep. So you guys met and and oh just, wait, I have to tell you this story. Oops, please tell it, please. We're in Black Hollywood Live. Yes, tell it, girl. <laughs> so tell it. Tell we're it. both working in Silicon Valley corporate Ugh. jobs Ugh. back Ugh. then. Yes. One of my first encounters with Kirk was in the parking lot, walking to my car. At that time, I had braids. Ooh, okay. And he says to me, Uh-oh. I don't know if this was a pickup line or what. <laughs> How many packs of hair is that? Oh, my God. Okay. Now, you have to know something about our culture. Yes, yes. I'm, I'm like, oh, my God. enough details yeah. to know about 
the packs of hair yes. that you have bought to create your hairstyle. So my mother and I just went and to the I'm store like, and get hers for her braids. <laughs> it was like five packs of hair at Sally's yeah. Beauty Supply. So that's number, kind number of zero like, five one. That yes. was like yeah, the number and all yeah, that. Yeah, all that, all exactly. that. Yes, exactly. Well, remember okay, well. before uh, before I hit the corporate America. <laughs> As an undergrad in a grad student, I coached a women's track. At yeah, so if you, watch our, if you watch our interview, he talks about that kind of stuff on there too. So, so yeah, the thing yeah. is, almost all the athletes I worked with, the ones I recruited, were all African American females. <laughs> That's trust so me, funny. I had been around kitchen weeds, braid jobs, <laughs> um, I burning ends, taking out hair. I'd seen it all. I'd seen it all. Like, done it all. Okay, yeah, and he's all. white. Yeah, and he's white. Yeah. And he's white. So I'm like. So I knew it. Yeah. Okay. Like, well, that's like number us. two. Um, like that. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, that was kind of like, okay, that was interesting. Yeah, that's interesting, you know, I'm sure. That piqued my interest yes. right away. Yes. So, anyway, side story. No, but, have, but it was a good <laughs> have you ever dated white before him? Or outside your race? I had. Okay. I dated outside my race okay. before. So that so that part wasn't like it's just like this dude, like this white dude knows about black yeah. hair. Yeah. That's the first thing. Okay, yeah. got it. Okay. Yeah. And, and so you've been around but have you ever dated black before? Yeah. Like yeah, okay. And um Yeah. Uh I you know the thing is for me was um you know, you look at Joni, it's like you said, you see that, that smile and oh, stuff it's like beautiful. that. Beautiful. And Joni could have been yellow, purple, orange. Yeah. Whatever and um, but that it's you know what I mean because it's like there's there's you see you can see a beautiful woman doesn't matter what she is that's true but man if on the inside she's rotten you just you take a left and you keep walking that's true um, Jody happened to be black and she had to be beautiful and uh, truly was truly is and um, you know that wasn't the thing that I was out like searching for you know like. You know, it wasn't like I want a black girl. Like you know, you no, weren't doing, you right. weren't doing that. It's just like, <laughs> but I tell you what, just what, what I love too is I, I especially with Joni because Joni comes from the South. Yes. And mm-hmm. so she has that that historical. She has that cultural ex- perspective too of the yes. deep South. I was so, going to ask her about that too. And, yeah. Yes. And then, because um, to me, I I just I like people who are just really. Um, like fully fully rounded and just and have have a story to tell and 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 have um, more than just somebody just wants to look in the mirror and and comb out their edges or right. talk about something or some right. guy that wants to get in the you know yeah. get swallowed up and look at himself in the mirror. And you, I mean, and obviously you've done since then you've done historical films, mm-hmm. so you you know some of the stuff too. Now you've done some of them. Yeah. But I was asking with you because coming from the south. Was that a big deal bringing him to the family? Was that a big deal talking about him for you in the beginning? I wouldn't say it was a big deal, but it was a different deal. Okay. Um, we all we still laugh about this <laughs> to this day. The first time that Kirk came home with me, my niece Bianca, who may be listening right now, I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I think yeah. she was probably ten. Nine. Nine. Yeah. She, we knock on the door and she opens the door knowing that it's, they're expecting us and she's like knowing that Auntie Joni's coming home with her boyfriend and she opened the door and the first thing she said, she didn't say hello, how are you? She said, you white. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> so it was just Oh, that's like, hilarious. So we laugh yeah. about that to this day. Hey, kids are honest. <laughs> But you know the thing that's so cool though is like with their family, you know, they just they just welcome me and um, yeah, there was no it, was, it never blinked nothing and and the thing is interesting too because in truth where you know where Joni grew up too was um would, would not have been a place I mean that yeah. it's like ground zero of the sixties yeah. and stuff yeah. of the civil rights movement and where people organized the NAACP and the black voters both those guys were killed in the 60s yeah. mm-hmm. in that area in Macomb and so so um, and the just the life experiences their family would have had too that it, in all rights you would assume like there ain't no white guy rolling in the house yeah, yeah so, right not, not, yeah. no yeah I'm sure and, yeah. Um, but though you know their whole family is just uh, they've always they're always good people you know I mean their their family is, is an army of you know, it's like 12 kids start off. With yeah, because you're the youngest of 12. Yeah, and we're very close-knit family. Yeah. And so, but everyone has always just welcomed Kirk and vice versa with me and his family. Mm-hmm. As far as I know. That does, that does happen. And I, want, and I want people out there to know that there are folks across the country. Yeah. And everybody said that really do. If, if it's, it's about the love. It's about the person. Yeah. Yes. 
And you may joke about, oh, he's white and all that stuff, but like this, right. but that's just that's just normal stuff. But yeah. like, they really fall in love with you, or they fall yeah. in love with you, and say, no, yeah. he's a good guy, and, and yeah. my sister's happy, or my daughter's happy, or my niece is happy, or my aunt's happy. Exactly. And we just, I tell you what, and the thing is, we've always just we just go with the flow. So wherever we're at, you know, we're gonna yeah. roll however it is, and so, mm-hmm. you know, it's not gonna be like I'm, you know, so whatever it is, it's getting we're eating this well we're eating you know what everybody's making you know it's like i always remember like a house party with some of her family like in chicago south side and somebody's oh, wow. insisting i tried some homemade head cheese you know it's oh, like, oh. <laughs> there's something even i don't need yeah, so this awful. Awful. Yeah. but it's like a, okay okay uh, yeah. let me just okay yeah i'm here let me try it yeah. And that, that garners respect too. People, when you come to their home and come yeah. to their area, they're like, "Oh, he he did okay. He yeah. tried it. Okay, oh, got it. Cool. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. He got mm-hmm. it. He tried yeah. it." But I, mean, I but I just want people to know nowadays that nowadays, yes, with all the racism out there, we know yes. it's out there. But there are folks who aren't like that. Right. Even in the deep south. Yeah, there are. I mean, there are. There's folks in the deep south. My brother went to Alabama um, not too long ago and was the only black person there. And he said he was treated so well. And he's like, mm-hmm. "If somebody say anything, say anything about me, he didn't hear it." Right. Yeah. But he was fed well. He he stayed at their homes. I mean, they they invite him down there, and he had a good time. Good. So I'm like, you know, I I mean, they they and in the Midwest too. People are nice in the Midwest also. They're not. not, I mean, I I feel like people on the coasts are harder than folks everywhere else nowadays. I don't know. My my opinion. About you guys, my opinion. I think you have a good point. More judgmental. Everything. I think so. I think so on both sides Mm -hmm. of the coast. I think I feel like when I go to Midwest, no one says anything. No one says boo to me. It's fine. It's good, good they time. don't say boo. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Then you might have a problem. I walked right into that one. Good night, everybody. Walked right out. That's that's a good one, girl. That was a good one. That's a guy. I walked right into that one. That I sure did. Yeah. How about yeah? You call me a spook? What's going on? Yeah, that's yeah. a yeah. home. Yeah, yeah. This, that's. I walked yeah. right into that one. Jeez and crackers. I walked right yeah, into that yes. one. That's good. That's fast. <laughs> Ah, yes. Um, right along. <laughs> uh, I like that. That's, that's very good. I like that. Um, yeah. So, but, but but there's people who are really, they're really nice and welcoming. And if you're considered part of someone's family, then you're family. Yeah. And then you just embrace that way until yeah. you do something wrong. Until you do something that proven, you know, innocent until proven guilty, yeah. so to speak. Right, until right. you do something right. wrong. Right. And right. the yeah. color of your skin is kind of like secondary. And like I said, they may joke with you about things here and there. We talk about our own people. We talk about, you know, our, some people are lighter skin than others. All or the time. All the time. So, I mean, just, you're yeah. part of that. Yes. Yeah. It's yeah. like, you just, you just have to be, that you have to be white. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Now, when you guys, because we guys got together in the 90s, so that was, was there anything going on in the 90s with like oh race kind of, or no, for you guys? Was there, I can't remember, there was some stuff, but I don't think it was anything um, really for you guys, right? When you guys got with together, us. not not with us. You were in Northern California, you said, right? You were in Northern mm-hmm. California. Were you in Sacramento or San Francisco? The Bay Area, San Jose. Bay Area. Well, they're they're very well, yeah, they're very liberal. But that's there. very that's yeah. very diverse up there. Yeah, it um, is. Yeah. No, there really there really wasn't. I mean, you know, the thing is too for us, um, maybe in some ways and and not consciously, maybe, but um, I think in some ways, like with us, we're in like a multicultural relationship. Maybe part of it is maybe you're more determined. Maybe you work harder in some ways at a subconscious level because there might be some circles you do get shut out of. Mm. You know what I mean? Maybe mm-hmm. there might be some hardcore folks on either side of the table. Yes. And yes. so so that means really at the end of the day, it's got to be all about each other because you you got to go, hey, you know, we can go into this and you lose your family and I lose my family and all my friends go that way and all your friends go, you know. And that's... And that'd be like the worst case scenario. So you better be you better be solid with each other. Yeah. Right. Because I guess that's yeah. a, that's another key. Well, you got well. You said you always have her back. You both feel it. Yeah. The strength has come from within in your relationship, doesn't it? First, to be able to handle everything else uh, externally. I guess. Yeah. You yeah. have to be solid and know that whatever they say, even if they say anything negative, it can't penetrate you. I guess. Right. 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 Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It must be. I mean, it must be one of those things where, as long as you guys know you're strong and you're with him for your reasons, and you, you know, yeah. it's all pure and, and yeah. it's whatever. But okay, if someone says something off color, so to speak. Right. Um, it won't really affect you that hard. Correct. Yeah. I mean, maybe like that's bad, but you know. Right. Because right. the thing is, um, a part of that is too is uh, the only one thing I always and I've said this before I, when I look at Joni and she's beautiful and she's dark skinned and you know that's part of the dark girls that was in there too. Yeah. But, so when she wakes up, she doesn't have to look in the mirror and know she's black, because she knows she's black. Hello, right. But the thing is, but it also, it doesn't define who she is. Mm-hmm. Many more than, it's, it's a part of who she is, mm-hmm. but it doesn't, you know, so, 
and I, because some people who have like limited mindsets might go, oh, okay, well, it's a black chick, so she must be this. And, but I look at Joan, it's like, it, it doesn't define, it's a part of who she is, mm-hmm. but it doesn't define who she is, and it doesn't limit who she can be. It didn't limit, mm-hmm. like, Viola Davis to, to dream big. Right. It didn't. I mean, it didn't. It wasn't like she was going to, and they both have, like, very similar backgrounds that are coming up economically and stuff, the whole thing. And so you look at those women, and they were going to refuse to go, hey, because I look like this, that's all I can be, or I'm going to limit myself of how I can be. And, and, and that's, I saw that right away with Joni. You know, she never was going to limit herself to either where she came up with parents, sharecroppers yeah. in hardcore Mississippi Ugh, yeah. or, or whatever. Um, and it was, and maybe there's parts of the world well, who maybe try to limit you, of course, on what you can be. And that, I'm, and I'm not naive enough to think that that's not the case. And it's the case in Hollywood all the well, time. Well, happens to all of us. I mean, right, I'm right. too old, or I'm exactly. too this, or I'm too fat, or they, they, exactly. all of us. All so this, the yeah. thing is, I think um, that's what I think. Like what Joni really typifies is like she happens to be a strong black woman, but she could be strong purple woman. Right. I want to ask you a question, mm-hmm. actually. Um, I don't. Did you did you watch How to Get with Murder? Or did you watch that series? Oh yeah. Okay. So a couple of years ago, when she did the whole the famous scene, where she takes off the makeup and the weave and all stuff. Oh, like, loved it. So I was, was going to ask you, as a dark skinned girl, there'll be a woman. I should say, girl, you're a woman. But as a dark skinned woman, talking to your inner girl, did it speak to you in any way? Oh yeah. That scene. I it did. I loved, loved, loved that scene, that episode when mm-hmm. she did that. I was really happy she did it because it, it just said that this is who this is who I am take it or leave it and it also said I am comfortable in the skin I'm in I'm so comfortable I can peel back all the layers yeah. and let the world yes, see yes. you know yeah. and I loved that in her yeah. in, in that whole episode mm-hmm. and just the fact that um, and, and knowing that that was Viola's idea yeah. to bring that I was to say that, yeah. yeah to bring that to to the to the showrunners and stuff so yeah, I loved it. I look at her and also Gabrielle Union, the person mm-hmm. I admire. Uh, a few years ago, she had that famous speech at the Essence Awards where she yeah. talked about how she used to be mean yeah. and judgmental and how we just stopped it. I mean, made me cry, brought me to tears. Mm-hmm. So I'm, good. I'm liking, I'm, see, I'm liking that our dark skinned sisters, yeah. I can say that, are yeah. getting recognition for positivity I love it. in our business. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, you I know, it. It, here's a quick example of that too. It's, it's amazing to me. I think. Um, uh, Gabrielle Dennis, you probably know Gabby. She's from was starring on Rosewood, and now she's got mm-hmm. picked up for the next season at Luke yeah. Cage. Yeah, and she had always hosted for years. It would be like a sister girls kind of brunch to lift up and encourage all uh, this group. And there were some guys that got invited, and her and I crossed paths from the comedy store days. Oh, so yeah, she knew sure, me yeah. and Joni. So, but you would go, and it'd be a lot. A lot of these women were competing for the same jobs. Yeah, mm-hmm. but she would do this thing. And it'd be like Simone Missick be there, Brescia Webb might be uh, there, yeah. all these people, and these are some of these people who've elevated and gone off. Yeah, yeah. They yeah. have these series now. Yeah. And it's amazing because you look back and it was, here's this group, and I, I especially look with Gabrielle, she didn't invite this whole group. This before, she, she was working, but it wasn't like doing what she's doing right yeah. now. And, you know, you just see these lives transformed, and they, it was a super supportive group that wasn't that's, like, yeah, that wasn't trying be. to beat each yeah. other down. You know, because, yeah, you want to get the jobs, and it stings when you don't get the job. But it's probably better. You know, you like it if it's somebody you actually knew. I, I, mm-hmm. I, I like that better. At least yeah. if I didn't get it, exactly. you got it good. Exactly. Yeah, because right. it'd be like, and, and so, um, but I thought that was really cool. And, and yeah. then, but with Viola, when she did that, too, because there's not any, there's not many actresses, period, whatever you call it, would ever right. strip down, like, exactly. do that, oh, and, exactly. and become... <laughs> And, you know, there's probably a lot of leading guys who wouldn't do that. I know, I know there are. This <laughs> guy can be vain, oh, trust and believe. There are a lot of guys who can be vain, exactly. yes. Yeah. Yes, more yeah. so than women sometimes. Yeah. So, yes, I, I, I agree with that also. That was the thing I, I thought just for herself, but for, for me, as a, a, I'm a medium brown skin person, but I, I love seeing someone, as people who are darker, who are making waves that are positive waves. And we'll be yes. Goldberg, another person who yeah. I admire, who just, yeah. just has blazed a trail for herself in this business. 
Mm-hmm. That doesn't look yeah. like what they say she should look right. like right. as making it. Yeah. Right. As a voice. What was, what was it that Viola was called? She's not the um, the typical. What is the standard of. Like the classic beauty. beauty. The classic the beauty. The classic yeah. beauty. They always say the classic yeah. beauty. Whatever that means. Right, exactly. It's like, <laughs> so the standard obviously is this is like how we live. It's standard saying, they're even saying it's it's blonde hair, blue eyed. It's not even like just white anymore. It's right, like right. now they're, they're narrowing it down to like, yes. you should look like this. Right. Yeah. Right. And so even white girls are getting pushed aside. Like, you're a brunette, right. you're a redhead. I'm like, what's right. wrong with you? Right. Yeah, auburn hair. It's crazy. Like, it's, it's so, but yeah, the class, they always say classic. It's not like classic beauty. I'm classic like, beauty. but I'm like, like, what do you consider classic? Yeah. Because you go through history. I always, I always talk about Marilyn Monroe. People talk about that all the time. Oh. Where she wasn't skinny. No. Her measurements today, like, people would be like, that's fat. She was like a 12, right? Right. 12, she wore 12s and 14s. Yes. Hello. She wouldn't even book a commercial right now. She wouldn't. <laughs> she wouldn't. That, that, that's, that's what's so ironic about it. It's like 30, 40 years, yeah. 50 years ago, she was hot. Yes. And you wouldn't say she was hot today. Yeah. And people were like, what is it? Um... Ashley, what's forget her last name, the, the, the plus size model, she's oh, fighting yeah. her way through. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, but Marilyn Monroe, who we consider probably a classic beauty on some level. Exactly. That's, I mean, so I kind of. Yeah. Um, so when you guys decided to kind of, so when you guys collaborate together on stuff, um, mm-hmm. who brings what to the table that the other doesn't bring? That you, like, you said earlier a little bit about the, the temperaments, but like, mm-hmm. in terms of just the creative process, what do you what do you just kind of bring to the table? Well, um, like let's well, on the music side, typically what I would do, like you know, I wrote a lot of all well, I wrote all the songs on the albums, but yes. I instantly bring Joni in that fast and go, okay, I'm gonna do this, and you lay down the harmony stuff because I know oh, Joni wow. can hear it. I can hear it, but I can't do it. And Joni, <laughs> with no preparation, I'm looking. I'm gonna wow. go. I know you can do this. <laughs> do it. You know what I need. I don't even have to tell what it is, and Joni would go like, "What?" Yeah. And, uh, well, a lot of times on his, with his music and cre- and composing and songwriting, <clears throat> writing the music, he would literally just call me in the room like, "Oh, I just came up with this melody. Sing something." Wow. <laughs> Sing along with this. You're like, oh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> but, right. Yeah. So, uh, so, <laughs> so and, but we've created things that way. Wow. Yeah, so, that, like that. Then. In terms of like writing stuff, like she writes her own stuff. Okay. And I write my own stuff, but we usually will edit each other's stuff. So like, oh, okay. so if Jordan's okay. writing like a newspaper article or a magazine article or she's working on a book, well, I'll take a pass at it too. I'll look at it, and then yeah. vice versa. More so eyes are good on it. That's fine. We always yeah. do yeah. because she might go, ah, that doesn't make sense. And so then that way, you know, that's how we work that kind of stuff. And on the acting side, um, we coach each other when we tape auditions for okay. the South. So mm-hmm. like if I'm shooting. If I'm shooting her, I'm directing her. If I'm okay. taking, if I'm getting auditions, she's directing me. Because you're self taping yeah. a lot now, aren't they? Yes, I yeah. love it. So you do, so you do yeah. like it? Okay, you do like I it. I do. Yeah. I like. Okay. I, well, it has pros and cons. Right. I like the convenience of it, wow. but I do think it, it is really good to be in the room if you can. Yeah. I think it's better, but I do love the convenience. Of okay. It. Like, I have to do one that's do. Tomorrow, no, Tuesday <laughs> in New Orleans. So I like to oh, okay. hop on a plane yeah. and fly to New okay. Orleans. Mm-hmm. I can just submit the tape. So I love that aspect of it. That makes sense. Actually, that makes sense. Yes, yeah. it saves on travel time and exactly. expense. But I know that being in that, we, we call it in life coaching high touch communication. When you're in front of people, yes, <laughs> that's your chance. Like, exactly. Like, because that way, if they want to adjust you to do stuff, um, right? But we, yeah. you know, we book off tape down there too. So okay. So we've been successful in that market off the tape. I mean, there's times we fly down there too, but um, we've gotten good good at that and. You know, then I coach and shoot other people too at the house. Oh yeah, okay. Yeah, so you know mm-hmm. we work on that kind of stuff. Um, but that's that's uh, it. Just it's so you just get used to be in front of the camera all the time and, and makes sense. Because I and I would be like her toughest director, right? Because that's funny. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> <It is. laughs> but his toughness clearly must help. It must yeah. be it's like it you're is. like okay, Kirk, I'll do, it. and then you do it, and you're like yeah. that is amazing, or that is really good, yeah. or. Yeah, right? but it yeah. can get it can be tricky though. You know, it can get yeah, hard it doing it with your spouse because yeah. they want the best for you, but it feels like they're really beating you down. And it's like oh. I'm like, well, I think you're just being really hard on me, you know. And then at the end, I can I can see I can yeah. always I have to say I can always yeah. see the results. I can because, see what okay. he yeah, was getting at, what he was pushing yeah. for. Because I always like I told you before. I mean, the thing is, I love Joni. Yes. Till the day I die. Yeah. 
but we're working on something like that. What we do for a living is I, I go, I know you can, your, your level is here, but if I feel like that one's there, I know you can do here. So I got to yeah. be honest. Yeah. And I, 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 I got to get you there. I, yeah. go, I right. go, so I know, I know you can get there because you, 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 that's where you work at. And so, um, yeah, so it's, the challenge is like, it'd be like if you were being, uh, yeah, it's like you're directing your wife, who you're with 24-7 for 22 years. Yeah. You know each other really well. Yeah, right, it's no, different right. if you walked on a set and you work with a guy for, you know, four days, and you, then, you, <laughs> then you're gone, you know? Yeah. And then, right. It's like, you know, it's like, and they don't know anything about you. It's like, yeah. I'm sure you probably each probably know what buttons to push for certain emotions, I'm sure. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, yeah. It is not. It I'm sure. Easy. I'm sure. No, I'm sure. Yeah. You know, but it's the push. You're like, yeah. mm, I don't just say to her to get her to do this. Yeah. Yeah. Because again, the bottom line, I was, is you're trying to get the best performance to send on tape, but you like, you know how to get there, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. And, and, the, and the true balance, there's a separation there too, where you got to go, okay, I got to take off the husband hat and put on a director hat. Because as a husband, you might, you know, if you're sitting on the side watching the director, you might go, Man, that guy's being kind of a jerk to my wife. I don't oh, like right. it. Yes. You go, wait, that's me and that with that hat. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> so you kinda you gotta separate yeah. a little bit for that. And then, you know, I mean it's it's always there, but you know, um but at the end of the day, I mean the thing is the the main deal we do would be just being supportive of what each other's doing. Because mm-hmm. um you gotta it's a, such a tough business. It's a, it's a rejection yes. business. Oh, my God. I mean there's like <laughs> you've got um let's say like in the you know, in the business, you got about this many people that that are like A-listers, mm-hmm. right? And then then you've got about this many people that make a living at it. And we're in that group, and then you've got about this many people <laughs> that are making less than five thousand dollars a year in the business. And yeah. That's a, that's the bulk of it. That's like maybe ninety five percent of the business. Right. So I mean, we're in the game, but it's a rejection game, and so you got to find those moments too to celebrate stuff yeah because yeah, sure. otherwise you just you know you know how it is it's yeah just i do like you grind on it you grind on it and um so you got to make sure uh you, you celebrate those victories and you celebrate like and it doesn't necessarily have to be like with bookings but just mm-hmm. whatever good audition you had a good idea i'm saying you had a good yeah. audition like, i had a really good audition yeah. and i feel good about that today because i feel like in my opinion there's another chance to act exactly it's no there's no chance to act so you didn't get paid yeah. for it no chance to act though, and like you should feel good if you feel like you na- you don't feel like the job. You feel because like you know, as you know, you could not you could not the job for any reason, like exactly. for any reason you could got it. But if you was, I think I did a good audition. They even tell they even tell you that was a great audition. You at least walk out mm-hmm. with that. And go, okay, I did what I, I came yes. to do, and I'm gonna call up my husband. Let's go have some dinner tonight because mm-hmm. I mean that's you know because I'm gonna have a good time you yeah. know yeah. because I had a good day today. Or you say with you, I had a good day writing. I wrote I wrote three pages or something that just right. really feels good to me. Yeah, I'm, I'm about that too. I, yeah. I feel like we try to wait for these real big markers to happen. That's so true. They may never happen. Right. So why not just enjoy the stuff? So I, was, I have friends too that are like, well, I can't stop at my friend. not right now because I still need to get to this. Mm-hmm. Well, why can't you still celebrate that over here? Right. Mm-hmm. Why not? Right. Yeah, and I think we're all, and I think we're all to some extent guilty of that too. Well, yeah, you, know, you, get, you just get haul and haul and haul and haul, and maybe the, you're looking at the end deal. Like you said, we never get there, and it's like all the stuff that you were doing up to that point, you you've missed those right. moments. Yeah, and we all do that. I mean, it's um, it's almost like to an analogy too is usually I'm driving, we do the carpool, and every once in a while, like Jody will drive, it, and I'll be riding it, and all of a sudden I'll notice stuff I never noticed before because you're <laughs> I'm right. focused on all this other right, stuff. Right, right. Hey, I didn't even know we had that. She'd be going, man, it's been for like five <laughs> right, years. Right, right. You're like, oops. Yeah, mm-hmm. but uh, but it, because it's like you're slowing down to kind right. of check stuff out. Yeah. As I've gotten older, I've learned because I'm I, you know I do a lot of things. I mean, I have books out. I'm, I'm now doing music. I start doing music. Cool. Wow. Um, yeah, my my first my first two songs are out. I'm getting some nice notices for Yay. that. Thank you. I'm doing conscious dance music. Okay. Um, so it's dance music with a positive message. Wow. And um, and it's, it's really nice. But I'm celebrating the fact that like you just said. The fact that I made a song, I have a producer, and I worked with a song, a producer, and it's and I just released it, that to me was enough for victory to me. Mm-hmm. Nice. I'm learning, if I was is. younger, I would have thought that way. I'm like, okay, well, it's out right. now. I mean, yeah, I got work to do, I want to promote it. That's, that's fine, but I've learned to stop and go, you know what? I made a song. Yes. And I think that's it's, victory. The, right. Exactly. Yeah. And the main thing about that, too, is is you did it. And um, a lot of people get frozen. Yes. To not never get anything done, and um, <sighs> yes. So I mean that that to me is like, and because what that tells you too is, um, 
you know, I didn't start in this business till like in my mid forties, and and most people don't think about breaking to Hollywood in the mid forties. That's kind of yeah, I'm about the same boat there. You know yes. what I'm saying? So, yes. that, but I made a living for the last ten years, and yeah. um, but a lot of people will, whether it's a fear or something like that, will freeze. And and the thing is, it's like they think, oh man, I'm 22, I missed the window. I'm, I'm 28, right. 32, oh, no. I'm not a series right. regular. And I, I look at like Gabby, I look at like Viola, I look at those people, and you know, and V's like in her 50s now, in her early 50s, and yes. it's like she won an Oscar in her early 50s, in her early 50s. Right. And it's like, you know, she could have packed it in at some point, go, ah, oh, it didn't happen when I was 32, right. I'm done, I quit. Right. And, and so I think it's cool, because you went out and bet on yourself, and you, and, you, and you got that song out there. Yeah. I do. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. That's great. Thank you. So I am ready, yeah. folks. You can get it anywhere. It's all yes. out everywhere. Um, now, I want to I ask you, because I've already asked him on my show. So okay. I get to ask you this time. Um, I asked the, that's the same two questions every show that I do. Uh-oh. And oh. so he answered it on, on my show, so that's your term. Okay. What, what word, and I actually have expanded this to even phrase with a short phrase, what word or phrase should we not say anymore in English language? <laughs> I love it. I always, because I believe in language. That's so I'm curious what people always say. I'm, I'm sure people have said this tons and tons. Say it anyway. Times. If you feel it, say it. I just, I think we can live without nigga. Yeah. I really do. I, I know, I do too. <laughs> I mean, yeah, people say it whenever I'm like, it's like, we don't really Even need it. Even in that right. beloved way. Yeah, we really we don't just, need it. I think we can do without it. It's just a device of words still. Mm-hmm. It comes from something that's even more serious. Yeah. That we need to put to bed. Yeah. I feel like we need to put to bed now at this point. Just need to kind of like... Yeah. So that's, that's, so that's not... Completely. To me, that's underrated. That's fine. That's fine. Okay. Now, what word do you think we should say more of? Ooh. What word should we mm-hmm. say more of? Together. Ooh. That's a good one. No one's ever said that. Really? No. Seriously. All right. Together, I like that. Mm-hmm. There's so much meaning behind that, actually. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm, you see where I'm going? I, with? girl, I do. Not just relationships, <laughs> but just like a period, just yeah. like as a human race, as yes, everything. Exactly. Again, it goes back to what I said. Thing, I said about about being solo. Me, me, I, I, I. So we're on the same plane today. We are, girl. We are. We are. We're working out. What's well, well, trippy two? Yeah. That trippy two is. What? My second word was we did that. My first word was the same as yours. Oh, second really? word was, it was. was it my, my second that. word was inclusive, which is very he similar did say that. together. Really? It is. He did say that. It's so oh, funny. Yeah. See? Same thing. Okay. Well, it makes so. sense now. It makes sense. I mean, with you two, it makes sense. <laughs> that makes sense. No, because I, I feel like we it works like inclusive and together and we. We don't say that yeah. at us. I just want to hold hands and sing. I know. Like, yeah. right now. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, but just, I mean, I, I mean, I, I can get a little sappy about it, but I really do feel like yeah. we're, especially in this business, we're taught yeah. in this country too many times. We're taught right. to go solo. Everything's about there's that one slot right there, so go. Exactly. Knock everybody out the way. Exactly. Everybody out the way, and, and, yeah. and, and, but to get that one slot. So true. But why can't we work together? Yes. And be inclusive. Yes. And create five or six more slots. Forget that one slot. Let's make our own slots. Hello. Together. Together. <laughs> I, 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 no, I, I mean, I, I love it. I love it. I think it's funny you guys have similar words, but that's, that but, no, but I, I, think, I think it's not underrated. People don't say it enough. Okay. Because we're so just like, we're so just taught to do, it, to do it ourselves and make it ourselves. And I got to have success first. And, but no, because right. I mean, if we do it together, everybody wins. Right. And you know what? James, it's even taking it down to a, a, a much lower level than that. You can think of it in terms like this. I one of the most fun times I had was we went to Germany one time, and there was these all these pubs where everyone sits together, and you said, "Well, you know, uh, you eat in yeah. Europe at those places. Yes, where you, yes. you just share it. It's yes, communal. Share space. Yes, you know, share space. And yeah. here we wouldn't dare sit oh, with somebody we God. don't know, know in a public restaurant. That's true. And I, got, I found a, a lot of joy in that. And here, it's like, sometimes I kind of just do it on purpose. Like, you, you go to Chipotle, oh, yeah. and they have those tables, and there's only, like, one person there, and there's nowhere else to sit. And I'm like, I'm going to sit there, because he doesn't want it. You can, I don't think they'd probably be comfortable. I'm just going to see what happens. Oh, but I love so doing so funny. That. But no, I'll tell you what. There's one place that I went to recently called Rock and Brews. Uh-huh. Um, Kiss owns it. The good Ooh, rock band Kiss. Really? And there's one by the airport in El Segundo. They have several locations. One's by the airport in El Segundo. I was with my sister and my brother-in-law. And they have the bench seating. Okay. But they also had 
separate CD too. Oh. We chose the best CD. It's so funny you said that. We sat That's there. Hilarious. I was playing. I was playing with dogs that were sitting next to me and little babies <laughs> staring at me. I was like, oh, I don't know, baby. They're like, ah. Yeah. I mean, like it literally. The, the wall is broken it's down. So different. Yeah. It's yeah. very European. It's very European. Yeah. It's but and I love that. I just I, love, like you said, taking those walls down and just seeing the person there yeah. next to you and the yeah. dogs and the babies and yeah. whatever else is there. Yeah. Yeah, it's just, I mean, it's the thing is, that's what's one of the things so cool about Europe is um, because it's so multicultural, they may look European, but it's like you go from one country to the next, yeah. different language and stuff. Yeah. But because they live like, you know, it's like if you and I drove to Nevada and everybody in Nevada yes. spoke Spanish, or yes. we went to, and it was like French, and the next country was German. Yeah. But the thing is, then you learn to appreciate all those differences like that. And um, so you can kind of just see past somebody what they look like. Cause then you go, yeah. oh. I thought you're from England. Oh, you're not. You're from France or something like that. And yeah, like, Europe's so small. Mm -hmm. and so yeah. I, I like I like in the East Coast to Europe because it's because in the East Coast oh. you go like five six states within like a day. So true. Where yeah. here it's mostly California, and then yeah. then you get to Oregon. Yeah. But you can go you can go from you know from Virginia to you know Boston and Massachusetts in like a day. Yeah. Literally, just keep just keep driving up. Mm -hmm. um, now, one of the things I want to ask you, one of the last things I'm going to ask you, that this our time is you have to come back to the show, of course. Mm -hmm. um, in the future, do you see anything? I, mean, I can see you guys doing a two-person play. I can see you guys doing. I see it. I see it. I want to tell you guys. I see it. Yeah. Am I on something? Because I see it. I, I. I'm envisioning it. You are. We really are. We're in. I think we are connected today. Yeah, we, we are. are. I want to be connected. I was already connected with him already, so I knew yeah. it. But we're we're connected. But I. Yeah. But no, I. I mean, there's, there's, there's something coming up. I see. I see it. I don't it's totally just, see it. It's coming up. Like I haven't written yet, but um, I've talked about it for about four or five years. Okay. Now. Um, Oh There's definitely God. one, um, and it's what I'll tell you about it is it, it's tied around. Um, there's a family heirloom that's at our house. Oh, you haven't been to our house yet, but there's a family yeah. heirloom at our house. It's an old bench. Ooh. But it's a bench that Joni sat on as a kid, her mom sat on as a kid. Oh, my God. Her grandma, grandma. set on as a kid. <laughs> there's a story. There's a story there. So, so there's a story. Right? There's a story. About it. So, so it becomes, it can wow. become a one or two person in. Um, I want to see that bench. Yeah, well, I want represent to see it. over. Um, I want to feel the bench. Different time, time thing. No, the, I see. I see yeah. a story. Now. I can almost write one for you too. I see a story. <laughs> that's so amazing that's what I'm talking that you about. said that. The music of the. But I was gonna tell you guys, my friend. Right, as I was doing my, I was doing my notes together. I said I gotta tell them. I feel like there's a two person play or something in there. Wow. With them. Yeah, we've okay. been. I feel it. Yeah. I just okay, feel it. We gotta it. start talking and start doing. Yeah, I mean, okay. I knocked it out fast because it's like I've been it's in my head for. for about four there's years. that bench. There, there's something. There's, there's a, that's a great. There's, there's something wow. with that. There's something with that bench. I feel yeah. it. Yeah, because all right. Yeah, I want to see the bench. I want to yeah. see. I want to yeah. see it for the bench. Yeah. yeah. Well, you guys are coming on the show. Thank you. Yeah. You guys are great. I mean, you guys are my hashtag relationship goals. <laughs> you guys are it. Um, and uh, so you can find them. Uh, they're on Twitter. Joyful Joni and Kirk Boville are both on there. Um, are you any, any latest projects? Anything going on right now for you guys right now? Are you in anything right now? Yeah. Um, you always you're always doing stuff. I'm like, what yeah, if you're, like. Mm -hmm. uh, Cook and somebody will be coming out pretty quick. Okay. Uh, yeah. Ed Harris and Amy Madigan. Yeah. Um, the Kevin Hart. Yes. Uh, Kevin Hart's guy, Black Man's Guy to History for the History. Yeah, we're talking about that. So yes, that's, that's kind really of, good. Kind of okay. I just I just shot uh, Hugh Laurie's new show, Chance. Oh, okay. I worked with Hugh Laurie. Great guy. Yeah, yeah. Then, and I just I worked. Um, gosh, was it Friday? I finished. Yes. I worked on an upcoming film that's going to be pretty funny. Um, good. And then I. What else? Did I, Come Sunday's coming out. Come Sunday, I got to work with Chewy Tell as you four. Yeah, yes. still, I, I love know him. What else I love him. Yeah, I love him. And then I'm still doing my Bosch gig. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So good. So good. So you can see them. They're oh, there. For there? the gamers okay. out there, yes. the Comic Con, we're both the yes. uh, voices oh, yeah. in. Um, uh, Wolfenstein, Colossus, Wolfenstein. the name. <laughs> well, I do a bunch of voices. In fact, I do some of the redneck guys in there. Of course, of course, we do so well. I mean, obviously. Yeah, but we both. Do yeah. multiple voices that that got announced, you know, and then they might have done some stuff at the Comic Con too. That okay. comes out in the fall. Oh, very good. Yeah, yeah. The, everybody's, yeah. In, everybody's in San Diego right now. All my white people are down there now. <laughs> yeah. They're all down there. Yeah. Uh, so you can follow us on Breaking Into you here on Black Hollywood Live. We're also on iTunes and YouTube under Black Hollywood Live. I have a Breaking Into you page. Go ahead and go there, and this link will be on there. So you can watch it and listen to it. It'll be, it'll be, it'll be on there. You can watch there. And I'm James Lott Jr. You can follow me at James Lott Jr. And I'll see you next time.
from producers Maria Menounos, Dario Christian, Tiana Hobson, Kevin Undergaro, and the entire BHL crew, we would like to thank you for supporting Black Hollywood Live, the first online broadcast network dedicated to African American entertainment. For questions and comments, contact us at info at blackhollywoodlive.com. Like us on Facebook, tweet us, or Instagram us at BHL Online. And I'm your BHL announcer, Scipio. Instagram me at Planet Scipio. Thank you for tuning in. The views expressed here are those of the host only and do not necessarily reflect the views of BHL or its owners or principals.